Today we're going to have a quick look at some of the past VCAR questions which relate to undirected graphs. So the first one here is looking at five teams that are playing a volleyball competition, each team playing each other once in 2007. So we've got a directed graph shown below and now this graph doesn't actually um, give us any information for this question but we can see from the graph it is actually a complete graph. So in 2007 we had a five vertice complete graph. Now the question actually asks in 2008 two teams F and G will join the competition. So in 2007 we had a complete graph with five vertices. In 2008 now we will have a complete graph with seven vertices. And so the question is asking us, compared to 2007, the number of extra games that will be played in 2008 will be. So we need to work out the number of edges, because each edge represents a match um, for a complete graph of seven vertices, the number of edges in a complete graph with five vertices, and find the difference. So our complete graph of seven will have 21 edges, or 21 matches played. A complete graph of five teams will have 10 matches played. So the difference there is 11. Note they do give you the K7 value and the K5 value as the answers. So make sure you read the full question carefully. This one here is relating to planar graphs. So the graph we've got at the moment is not planar because we can see there are some edges intersecting where there, there are no vertices in the middle there. So the question asks, the graph above has how many faces? At the moment, we can't count that. So the first thing we need to do is redraw that graph as planar. So now we can see the faces clearly and we can count, and I've just shown them there in different colors, that now we have six faces. You are unable to get that answer without redrawing the graph. So whenever you see anything relating to a planar graph, make sure you are redrawing it first. This question here, you don't actually need to do anything. It's just testing your knowledge of the definitions about Euler paths and networks. So let's have a look. An Euler path through a network commences at vertex P and ends at vertex Q. That's a key piece of information. So we know that any Euler path where it starts and ends at different points, those two points or vertices will be of an odd degree. So now we need to consider, knowing that, the next five statements. In the network, there could be three vertices with, an odd, with a degree equal to one. Now one's an odd number. We've said that in order to have an Euler path, you can only have two vertices of an odd degree. So that statement's incorrect. The path could have passed through an isolated vertex. Now an isolated vertex doesn't have any edges going to it, that's its definition. So therefore you cannot pass through an isolated vertex on any path. So that's incorrect. The path could have included vertex Q more than once. Now we have to finish at Q, but that doesn't mean that if it say had a degree of three, we could have entered Q, left again, and then returned for the final end point. So that's a possible correct answer. The fourth statement, the sum of the degrees of vertices P and Q could equal 7. Now, we don't know the degree of P and Q, but we do know they have to be odd. If you add any two odd numbers together, you will get an even answer. So 7 is an odd number, so that statement cannot be correct. The sum of the degrees of all vertices in the network could equal 7. Now, if you've got two odd numbers plus any other number of even numbers, your answer is going to be even when you add them all together. So again, that statement, the sum of all of the degrees cannot be seven because seven is an odd number. So then we're left with only one statement which could be correct, so our answer is B. This question here is taken from an exam two, extended response, and it was question one in the section. So relatively easy but you need to make sure you're reading the questions carefully. So the vertices in the network diagram below show the entrance to a wildlife park and six picnic areas in the park, labelled P1 through to six. The numbers on the edges represent lengths in metres of the roads joining these locations. 
So we have a weighted graph here. So question part A asks, in the graph, what is the degree of the vertex at the entrance of the wildlife park? So pretty straightforward. We find our entrance and we count there we've got a degree of three. What is the shortest distance in metres from the entrance to the picnic area? Sorry, picnic area three. So we need to consider all possible paths here. And we can see going straight through the middle, we've got a path from the entrance through P6 to P3, which gives us a total of 1,200 metres. So 800 plus 400. So now we look to see, is there anything that's shorter? And I can see if I go through P1 down to P3, I actually only get 600 plus 400, so 1,000 metres. So that's shorter. And it's worth just looking at the graph and checking whether there is anything shorter than that. But I, we can't see anything there, so therefore our answer is 1,000 metres. Make sure if you have written out a few different pathways for your working that you make your final answer quite clear because all they want here is the actual number 1,000. They don't need the pathway. They just want to know the distance. Part C of this question then says... A park ranger starts at the entrance and drives along every road in the park once. So that's a key piece of information. Driving along every road once means that we have an Euler path. So if we have any vertices that are of an odd degree, we're going to start at one and finish at the other. So if we look at the next part of the question, at which picnic area will the park ranger finish? We already know the entrance has a degree of three and is odd. So we need to find the other vertex in the graph that is also odd. So if we go back to our original graph and check all of our vertices, we can see that P4, the picnic area four, gives us that odd vertice. So therefore, in our answer here, we're going to finish at picnic area four. What mathematical term is used to describe the route the park ranger takes? Well, that's our Euler path, so what we've already stated in our thinking. Part D, a park cleaner follows a route that starts at the entrance and passes through each picnic area once, ending at P1. So again, now we need to consider what is the route that they're taking. And in this case, they only need to go through each picnic area, which are represented by the vertices, so therefore an Hamilton path. Write down the order in which the park cleaner will visit the six picnic areas. Now note here, they have to start at the entrance and have to finish at P1. So looking back at your graph, there's only one possible pathway through. And there we've stated it there. Entrance through P5 to P4 to P6, P3, P2 and finally P1.